Hello, and welcome to NSG TV, powered by Nerd Street Gamers. I'll be your host, Alex, AKA Sir Skrallix, bringing you along our journey into the world of esports. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Nerd Street Gamers is the forefront of community-based gaming in locations expanding throughout the United States. Nerd Street Gamers brings the community, the tournaments, the professional team boot camps, and the celebrities to your backyard. Nerd Street Gamers is hosting tournaments across the country to cultivate an environment where gamers can both build communities and compete for very generous prizes. Our first stop is with ASIO, a PC peripheral company who is attempting to reinforce their brand by sponsoring a roster of Counter-Strike Global Offensive players. They've collected five talented players, with histories ranging from qualified ex-pros to a green first-time live event player. The Eastern Conference Championship is the second leg of Nerd Street Gamers' National Open Tournament. This event is being held at GexCon in Washington, D.C. $10,000 hang in the balance, with $7,000 going to first place. This tournament leads to the Grand Championship, which will be held in Atlantic City in December for $30,000. Let's take a look. You guys need to play together. And listen, if it's a 5v3, give up the site. Give up the site and just retake together. Wait. Post. Don't take out nades, nothing. You don't even throw one retake smoke or just one flash and go. My name is Tarek Bibby Ingram. I'm the coach of Azu Esports. We are here this weekend to compete in Nerd Street Gamers Counter Strike Tournament. Some of our goals to come into the LAN is we would like to win it, you know, but we have been a team for a week or two weeks. So putting together and actually them meeting in person and, you know, gaining that friendship in person is most important before you put together a team. And once they meet and once they have that friendship within IRL, it'll translate towards the game and then basically we're just coming here to prove ourselves and show people that we're back on the map and want to win. As far as the team goes, it's definitely a morale booster to have everybody come back into the team, especially someone like Ian. You know, we did replace him back in Maine, but he has shown that he deserves it and he wants to play in pro. And they have the friendship at the end of the day. And I think that putting them back together in a team aspect and with a good work environment with Azio Esports and myself bringing that, I feel like them being back together is the right thing, especially for NA. What's up, man? You made it. How you oh, been? Man. Good. How you been? It's good to see hey, you. Guys, nice. he's here. here. Baby's here. What's up, boys? It's like the crew's coming together. What's up, yeah, what's up bro? How you been? What's up, Mike, big Mike. What's up, Josh? He's out. He's all for us? Yeah, man. Come check yeah. out the stuff. Over here, we got set up for the team. So, coach oh, on top. I got you this color. Nice, nice. Yeah. This is my favorite color. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Was there any morale problems on the team with having Pro League kind of baited and switched out from underneath them? Not at all. At the end of the day, they're friends. It doesn't matter who, you know, Graham played Pro. It doesn't matter if some of them got replaced off the team. Once we brought this back together, once we got the plan together to put this back together, they were more than ecstatic to leave each one of their teams. The event that ASIO is competing in is Nerd Street Gamers' $10,000 Counter-Strike Tournament at GexCon. And while ASIO is talking strategy, the Nerd Street Gamers are making preparations and setting up the event stage. The last member of ASIO to arrive is Snakes, an up-and-coming player that has qualified at the professional level of competition a year before, but unfortunately was turned away from the limelight for being too young. Yeah. 
I think the best scenario, we get there, check in as fast as possible, and then get out. Because we're like the last group. So, you know, once we check in, then we're fine. We can go relax, watch matches, do whatever you guys want to do uh, leading up to the match. I don't know what you have planned for that, Bibby, but I'll let you get more in detail leading up to the match, what you, got, what you want from the guys. Okay. All right. Um, but that's kind of where we're at with that uh, for tomorrow. And then leading into Saturday, um, we need to be up at 8 because we only got two showers. And if you want to shower when you wake up, we need to get up early so you can shower. Other than that, uh, Bibby, you want to take over and say what you guys say with these boys? I want you guys to be super confident and super, you know, happy, but have fun at the same time. Because when you guys play and you guys are having fun, the outcome is different than when you guys sit there and, you know, over confident or over whatever the word is. Yep. And um, that's pretty much all I have to say. What are we doing tonight? Are we going to go to the land center tonight or are we just chilling? What do you guys want to do? You guys tired or are you guys... I think we should go to the land center. I think the plan is to go to the land center right now, yeah. Okay. And, and then we could sleep in a little bit more than tomorrow if we put in some good work. I don't mind letting you guys sleep in more tomorrow if you guys put in more work tonight at the land center. Okay. I'm, comp I'm very good at compromising. <laughs> so. I think the land center would be good for him too because it's his first tournament. So being right next to each other, he'll... You know, get four or five hours of yeah, playing sure. practice games or whatever, so. With a game plan set for the next day, and the mental preparation founded under the umbrella of player expectations, Modem calls for the team to practice at a local land center. After a 30 minute drive each way, the team was only able to collect about three hours of practice. For a veteran team, this may be ideal, but for a newly formed roster that has never played in person together, it may not be enough. You can practice really bad, and then you can practice really good where you're not wasting the time. Like anyone can go into a server and play for a very long time and not learn anything. But then there's people who can go in there and be very good with their time and learn a lot of things in a short amount of time. So that's it's all about the way you develop yourself. And, I, and it doesn't matter how old you are. And I feel like if you are younger, yes, you do have an advantage but it's, it's all depending on experience too. Returning from the land center, it's time to turn in for the night. A night that would largely be restless under the stress of the team's first LAN event together. And for one player, Hunter's first LAN event ever. With the recent shooting at a Madden event in Jacksonville, Florida, security has been heightened. Players' bags, persons, and peripherals were all checked at the front door. These security measures serve to lessen the inherent tension in the air after such a tragedy. For ASIO's group stage schedule, they will not play on the main stage. A fortunate hand dealt to them that will allow the green roster to acclimate to the pressure of the LAN event. They set up their peripherals like personal mice, keyboards, and configurations to make the computer they're sitting at feel most like home. Anything to minimize the impact of a distraction. very clean, which is like vital for us to win games. Uh, our eco's a little sloppy, but our, we really came together in our gun rounds. We uh, had a couple hiccups. You could tell we were a little nervous. First land as a team and the Hunter's first land as a player. Did really well, had good comms, good nade usage. And uh, I think that was a great warm up game for us. We have, I think, one or two more games left in our group. Then we'll be out of groups. Time to get the day going. We got group play today. Time to wake the guys up. Yo, Ian. Yeah. Time to wake up, bro. Hi. See if Josh is awake. Yo, Josh. Right. 
Time to wake up, bro. Yo, Big Mike. Time to wake up, bro. It's day two, and the team has an early start. They will spend their morning watching the first stages of the main brackets begin before shortly making their way to the main stage themselves. We should get a clean win here, like 16-6, 16-8, something like that. That's what's expected of us. Again, ASIO's strong performance in group stages meant that their journey through the brackets would begin by competing against the lower-seeded teams who were not perfect on day one. I think we did pretty good. Our comms are way better than that we are online, so it should help us in these land matches. I think we'll do good in the next the coming up games. Confidence is high early in the day, with the team noting that their weak points, such as communication, have been shored up. Just like in any traditional sport, like the coach is really there for the, the grinding that the players, you know, don't have really the time for. That's like, you know, watching the other team you're competing and taking notes, you know, helping them through the game so they don't have to like really re like keep all this in their memory. They do to a point, but they also really focus on their strats that they have, they focus on themselves. So the coach is really there not just to, you know, strategically help them, but also prepare them before the game and during the game. Keep them focused, keep them positive, you know, um, and he keeps them in check too. In every squad, like every team, they have an IGO, which is the in-game leader. Everyone looks towards him. And when sometimes there's conflicts with the IGO and the other players, that's where the coach comes in, squashes it, all right? Because he's not a player, so he's outside that box where he can control the players better than the player could control his own players. Azio has advanced to the quarterfinals in the bracket stages. Every match from here on out is going to have its own monsters to deal with as each team is unique. It's been a long day. The guys are tired, but I'm more than confident that the boys are going to come out with the win here today. If we lose this one, it would definitely be a heartbreak to the team. I mean, we came here to win, and it would be a heartbreak. 3v3. Nice. Nice. I ran up mid with my knife out. Azio swiftly shuffle Broken Alliance against the ropes on their opponent's map pick of Dust 2. The one-sided affair ended in a scoreline of 16 to 2 and served only to inflate Azio's egos, especially moving into their own map pick of Nuke. However, they would be in for a rude awakening against a revitalized Broken Alliance squad who are looking for redemption. I'm in back. We just needed to get picks, and once those picks started coming our way, we just stood, stood calm. Our, our comms were clear, really. We just let each other make our plays because we're both playmakers. We know that. No journey is without its challenge, and the semifinals match is against Vision Gaming, a team that outperformed ASIO in the prior Semi-Pro Mountain Dew League, even making it to the playoffs of that season. This will be a challenge to ASIO's inner workings. If they do not have a clean game, problems will be exacerbated. Any fault observed in their previous matches will be magnified under these conditions. 
Uh, I'm pretty confident that we're gonna pretty much do all them. And in terms of experience, we have much more experience compared to them. And I think they're plugging with their current five, so we'll be in a good stand. I slept for uh, four hours, kept getting waking up by a troll in the house. Somebody kept playing noises, but yeah. Two hours of sleep yesterday, I did fine, so should be good. It's always going to be a team effort, so I'm always going to have the back of my team and hope they have the same. How confident we're feeling for today is more confident than we've been this entire lane so far because we did a little preparation together yesterday. So we have an idea of what we want to do this time. Honestly, no nerves coming into the clear mindset. Feeling good. It's a mission to wake these guys up. I think it'll take an impact on our game depending on how this first game goes. If the first game goes flawless, then we're going to just run through it. We should be fine and we'll be awake and be prepared. But if this first match we go down right off the bat, it's going to be hard to wake them up. The first few rounds against Vision served as a wake-up call to the team. This was not only a level of teamwork that they had not encountered in this tournament before, but the individual capabilities of the Vision roster could often frustrate the strategies that Azio had attempted to employ. As Vision took an early command of the lead, Azio took refuge in any round they could piece together for a win. Morale is ever important to an in-development roster, as well as to youthful players who don't necessarily have the fortitude to mentally recover from deficit. They require a mental reset and external guidance from their coach, Bibby. Someone has to do it. Because you guys are all down and you're not talking. I can't do it. Someone's got to do it. So take one, two minutes, take a walk, whatever you guys got to do. But I'm telling you right now, nuke, come on, we start off CT. Seriously, yeah. yeah. win pistol, life. that's it. Forget about cash, to yeah. be honest. Yeah. You guys need to play together. And listen, if it's a 5v3, give up the site. Give up the site and just retake together. Wait. Post. Don't take out nades, nothing. You don't even throw one retake smoke or just one flash and go. Moving into map two of the series, it's now Azio who are up against the ropes. A loss on their own map pick of Nuke would result in a third place finish in the tournament for a meager $500. Dark. 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 Nice kick. Similar to the battle against Broken Alliance, the first half was again down to the wire. Nice. 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 Two more. Three. Vision opened their second half with an overwhelming lead, creating a five-round buffer. But this buffer would wear to its absolute limit. Azio performed a miraculous comeback to now lead their opponents 14 to 13 at the same time as shattering their economy. It would be a routine tap-in to close out Nuke with a win. Touch a swinging floor. It's all good. But fate deemed it not to be in the cards. Azio would fumble the rifle advantage in the final rounds and lose at the end of regulation, 14 to 16. The team is left to somberly collect their peripherals after a loss from the main stage. They recollect on specific moments during the match that could have made the difference in the outcome. I'm between door and a main, all right? There are two pushing door. I also call their pushing a main. I am between both of those areas. I am dead. Hunter's MB, Hunter's yelling at the top of his lungs, come be. And you guys are still coming to help me. Listen and communicate. This was our CT side. CT side? This was CT side. I was hopping in the vent and I said, they're both next to me and you guys were still walking down the ramp. Lost O2 division, first map. 
was close to the start, then lost control of it. Second map, close again. Started to lose, we were down like eight, eight or nine rounds, and we came back. 14-14, lost the last two, lost 16-14. Uh, we weren't too disappointed in the loss. We're a new team, this is our first land together, and this is like, none of us have played together, and or two of us have, but it was like five or six seasons ago. So, not too worried about it, and we're just gonna continue to grow, use it as a learning experience, and just be positive about it. We're looking for players who really want it. You know, we're looking for players that deserve this opportunity. And Bibby found those players and told them the truth. Like, I'm very transparent. I have done everything I said I was gonna do for the players, because I'm a player. I've been doing it for 17 years. So, you know, that's just, that's just some of the best things I could see out of this is just finally seeing players that really deserve this opportunity and they can take it to the full extent. The in-game leader, MOTM, was recruited by Vision Gaming shortly after being released by ASIO and has since left Vision for a more favorable team known as Swole Patrol, but that position was denied and he unfortunately now stands alone. As our stop in the nation's capital comes to an end, we're off to the capital of Pennsylvania, Harrisburg, where Harrisburg University is holding one of the largest collegiate tournaments in the country. Yes, you heard right, collegiate esports is growing in a very positive direction. Universities are recognizing the budding esports industry and are spearheading programs to prepare for the first wave of higher educated, industry specific professionals to build the foundation for the future of esports. old Harrisburg. I never knew Harrisburg had so many bridges. There's one right there. Let's see if we can focus that. There's another one over there. I've always driven through Harrisburg, but I've never actually stayed in Harrisburg. Good morning, guys. It's Alex, aka Sir Scrouse, again here with Nurse Street Gamers. And this weekend, we are at Harrisburg University for the Hue Festival, which is a gaming and music festival here in Harrisburg University. Collegiate teams from all over are participating in tournaments all weekend, and we are the tournament organizers. Harrisburg is a beautiful city, and it's actually the capital of Pennsylvania. And as you guys know, Nursery Gamers, right now we are based out of Philadelphia. This festival is supposed to have music, food, gaming. Um, and as I said, we are the tournament organizers, so. Now that I've got everything packed up, let's go check it out.
the tournament this weekend is being run across three floors. On the first floor, you have the pit, which includes the Overwatch and the League of Legends group play. On the second floor is the League of Legends staging area, along with the free play area. And on the third floor, you have the Overwatch stage. It's very exciting to see everything start to come together here, but I think the tournaments are just starting. So come on, let's go. To say being here at Hue Festival with all of these collegiate esport athletes is pretty impressive. I mean, some of them are here on college scholarships, some of them are even here on full rides for esports specifically. We got some interviews with players, coaches, and even the people here at Harrisburg University who are in charge of the esports program. My name is Max Akesson, I'm from Sweden, and my gamer tag is Rat. My name is Axel, and uh, my in game name is also Axel, and I play. DPS for Maryville University. So for me, it has always been a dream of mine to go to college in the US. I never thought I would actually be able to do it. I got this offer to play for Maryville, and I'm so grateful for it. And uh, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity, so it's incredible. My name's Parker Kane Lewis. I'm from Houston, Texas, and I attend Maryville University. So for me, my second two years of high school, I had to attend as like a separate university, a private university. Because of that, it was like really financially uh, hard on my family. So being able to get a scholarship, especially for esports, is like really, really huge to me because my scholarship, it pretty much enables me to just do a lot of stuff that I wouldn't have the opportunity to do before. It's also allowed me to open up and like get a career into esports, like after I'm done playing, because I won't be a player forever. So it'll allow me to become a coach, become a manager, uh, just get into like the business side of esports, like just have an opportunity to be a part of something that I really, really enjoy and appreciate. And we have always been talking about like going here, going to college, and now through playing Overwatch and college, getting into the esports scene has like opened up this opportunity for us to actually come here. What's great about this opportunity is that we also get an education. So in case we don't go pro, we still have that education in our back. My name is Chad Smeltz. I'm the director of esports at Harrisburg University. Esports and collegiate has been growing so fast and so large that it's provided so many things. Uh, scholarships obviously are a very big one. When parents see that esports provides scholarships, it's something that they can realize that it's serious and that it's a, it's a big industry. That's something that I'm super excited about. But it also provides experience for people to learn jobs that are related to esports, whether it's marketing or production or anything on the back end. It's exciting to see all the things that go into, say, making an event and then having that apply to colleges and to be able to learn more from it. Well guys, day one is coming to a close. Teams are starting to head home for the night. Tonight marks the end of group stages, which means tomorrow we have the finals. And I'm super excited because there are a ton of good teams here and I'm excited to see who's gonna come out on top. I'll see you all in the morning. Good morning guys, it's day two of Hue Fest, also the finals day for the esports competition. There's a ton of good collegiate teams that have made it out of group stage. Let's go find out who's gonna come out on top. Also, if you're wondering what these massive buildings are behind me, this is the Pennsylvania State Capitol Complex. You guys have seen the pit, some of the other stages, but nothing compares to this stage. Look at this. In just a few hours, this place is gonna fill up with spectators for the championship of both League of Legends and Overwatch. We've been waiting for this all weekend.
place isn't even full yet and it's already electric in here. They're about to get started. Here we go. guys thank you so much for coming by the vlog q fest was a huge success congratulations to the winners maryville and the columbia universities on their victories this weekend if you guys took anything from this weekend it's that collegiate esports is going to be huge you guys saw how successful this event was this weekend how many teams participated and how good the competition was i can't wait to see where collegiate esports goes years from now once again i'm alex aka sir scralix with nerd street gamers and i'll see you in the next one Congratulations to Maryville and Columbia Universities on their victories, and a big congratulations to Harrisburg University and universities everywhere who are paving the way for higher educated esports professionals. Just like traditional sports, the esports scene has a number of celebrities. We were able to sit down with some of those celebrities, specifically Summit 1G, Launders, and Whitmer, to ask them how they got to where they are now. We'll also find out what their day-to-day -day routines consisted of both before and after becoming a cornerstone in competitive esports. So for me, it was a very organic experience where I came in when I was like 22 into CSGO after playing games when I was a lot younger and didn't have a lot of connections or anything like that, like no one on my Steam friends list, uh, like no one who was in the scene. And the first thing I did was I made a YouTube channel and made movement tutorials so that I could gain some kind of clout in the scene. Um, and the tutorials were made so that I could help people get better at movement. I wasn't intending to kind of get famous off of those, but they helped at the end of the day build me a personal brand that would eventually get me attention and then I decided to use that to leverage casting opportunities. Um, I actually responded to a ESEA post from Sadokist where he was looking for a caster for LAN ETS. It was a volunteer position. And um, I sent him a video I made on YouTube and it was private. It was really bad. And he said, you're actually terrible, but you're, you have a good voice. So you know, sometimes that's all you need. We can, we can work on the rest. So he actually brought me out to ETS. And then someone from Sivo was in the stream. They saw that and um, gave me an opportunity at SIVO, and then from there it was just lands and everything like that. I think in terms of opportunities, it was mostly, I'd say Sado Kids gave me the biggest opportunity, like casting a LAN event, because it's really hard to go from like the online to the offline, like that's the big step I think for a lot of people um, on, on a lot of levels. And then from there, when you're actually at a LAN event, you know, if you, as long as you have you get some good advice on how to network with people and you get introduced to the right people that can show you around. Um, making friends is a lot easier. And so I would definitely credit like a lot of, at least the casting portion of, of what I do. And I do you know content on YouTube and some other stuff. But the casting portion I'd say has, has a lot to do with Sadokist. So I would, I would say that no matter what you get good at, whether it's you know, video content creation, casting, or even if you go into another field in, in another job, you know, uh, networking is gonna be one of the most important skills you can have. I think um, it's really great to be good at what you do and you should always strive to work hard and be good at what you do. But um, a lot of the times, somebody who's not, who isn't necessarily the best person in the, in the industry, um, is not necessarily gonna get the job over somebody who's close to somebody who can give them that job. So um, having the right friends is very important. And um, 
I think it's a harsh reality for a lot of people, but developing the social skills, especially if you're gonna work in entertainment, which I mean, it's more fair to say that, you know, if you're a sociable, likable person, you're gonna get more work in entertainment, that that makes sense, right? That's applicable to what you do. You gotta get people to like you. Um, and, you know, you gotta get one person to like you, and then when you're on camera, you gotta get thousands of people to like you. So that's a skill that you, um, you, you should try to develop and um, always think about talking to people. So when I was younger, I've worked every job in the book, you know, started at McDonald's, done telemarketing, um, club promotion, like everything. And I'd have to say the worst job I had that I did for about two years was working at St. Lawrence Market, which is a wonderful street market in, in Toronto as a butcher. And coming in uh, during like really cold winter nights at 4 a.m. Uh, to go into the freezer to take out all this meat and like take out, trim all the fat off the meat every single morning and deal with cold cold meat all day long and then get followed home by dogs at like 6 p.m. was probably the worst experience I've had working a normie job. So yeah, very happy I get to wear a suit to work. So. When I first started out my YouTube channel, I used to have a whiteboard and I would keep track of all the subscribers I had every month and it was like, you know, 20 subs for the first month and then maybe 50 for the next month. And it was really hard in the beginning, but um, I think if you really believe in yourself, I remember thinking I'm gonna look back on this in three years and think, wow, that was so long ago. And, and, and look where I am now. And I really got there, you know, and I, I had no reason to believe in myself in a sense. I had never done YouTube before. You know, I just had an idea of how to get there. I'd followed people that I knew had done it before. Um, I think if you have the right idols, like I had Purge Gamers and Husky Starcraft, a couple of channels, followed their model and just went step by step and built brick by brick with my audience and, and all the videos. I think that um, with just the hard work, you can get to wherever you want to be. And we have a, even though it's very competitive um, in the market today, everyone's got an internet connection and everyone can make a YouTube channel. At the same time, you've got a lot of resources to improve too. So I think if, uh, as long as you're dedicated and you follow the right people, um, you can do it too. Oh man, Time Warner Cable right before I became a streamer. Um, it was like my first real jump into uh into uh, call, being just like a call call representative. It was the worst job I'd ever had. It was awful. Sitting there for like 10, 10 minutes waiting for calls. It was the, the worst job ever. I just, I don't even know how to explain it. It was just awful. Bad supervisors. Dude, they even like, when you would mess up a call, they the supervisor would take you over to his desk and all your peers are around you. Every, all your people that you work with are around you. And this dude will play your call that you effed up on, on speaker in front of everyone. And it was awful, dude, it was awful. I, I was very happy to get out of there. <laughs> Honestly, when it when it first when we first started, it wasn't like about anything. There wasn't really money revolving around Twitch. There wasn't really people doing it like crazy full time and like making a killing, you know what I mean? There wasn't really like a culture yet on Twitch where it was like donating was normal and subbing was normal. It was like, those were like the weird guys back then, you know what I mean, doing that kind of stuff. Honestly, it all, it, I didn't do a lot of, I didn't do any collabing or anything. I just pretty much just loved Counter-Strike, played Counter-Strike, decided that it would be fun to stream Counter-Strike. And then War Z came out and I stopped caring about Counter-Strike. I left my team and I just went hard into War Z. And there was nothing behind it. It wasn't like, oh dude, I think War Z is gonna like be the next best game. It's gonna blow me up. It was just like, dude, this game is freaking sick, man. I'm loving it, you know what I mean? So that's basically how Twitch like started out. I think for most of the successful guys probably started out the same way. Just for the love of the game, just decided to try it, you know? Okay, so my first step, um, that would probably be um, dropping school actually, um, quitting both of my jobs full time and just pursuing esports full time for free. Um, that was a pretty scary risk because, you know, it was like a really unknown sphere at that time. I mean, I know people had money in it or whatever, um, but, you know, when you're a 19 year old kid and, you know, you have a good school opportunity, you have, you know, jobs and stuff, and to just drop everything and say, you know, this is what I want to do. 
um, for free regardless if money comes out of it or not. Um, that was pretty scary, but I mean, I think that's something you have to do um, if you really want to make it. Like, you have to be able to put in full-time hours into it, um, and you have to be able to show that like you're, that's how dedicated to the craft that you are. Oh man, oh man, an opportunity that I created. I mean, I feel like um, an opportunity that anybody could create for themselves is just their own brand in esports, um, whether that be through streaming or competing at a really high level consistently. Um, that's something that just kind of comes down to, you know, how, besides, you know, competing or building my own team, um, how can I build my own brand? And that just expands opportunities for itself. Um, those kind of grow exponentially. When I signed with Complexity, um, they had a lot of partners and uh, that, that also, they're just a bigger brand. So that gave me a lot of opportunity to expand my own brand, um, you know, for the years to come. Um, whether that would just be like partnerships with other websites or, you know, other players, org owners, etc. Yeah, some, for, I mean, I didn't forever, you know. Um, some people just get it, I think. Sometimes some people are just blessed with it, like based on their personality. Um, other people have to work really, really hard at it. Like they have to consistently do things at like the same time every single day. Um, not that I think he needs to do it, but look at like Tarek with like the daily reminder to, you know, wash your hair or whatever. 10,000 retweets, you know? <laughs> Um, inspirational words to get into esports. I mean, first off, you have to love it. Um, if you don't love what it, you're doing and the people that you're doing it with, and you, you don't feel like you're all doing something together, it's not going to work. You can't half-ass this one. Um, you have to be consistent, which is like something I struggled with. But you have to be consistent in everything that you do, um, and you can't be afraid to take risks. Risks because. Um, if you are, it's just not going to work out. Like, it's that simple. I know that sounds really bland, but if you just sit there and just consistently do the same thing every single day, no one wants to see that. We've covered the celebrities, the tournaments, and the budding collegiate participation in esports. The future of esports is bright, and it's only just the beginning. Thank you so much for tuning in. As always, I'm Alex, Sir Skralix with NSG TV, and I'll see you next time.